all have to hold our breath. That ah, oh, the tech will it work? Mm. Shall I tell the story for you to put it on? I don't think it's going to work. No, nothing. Tell the story. Right. Well, the story, which is a one uh, unbelievable memory, uh, but I did want to include it. Uh, we talked earlier of uh, my headmaster, P. A. Wayne, Philip Arthur Wayne, uh, great clever man. He was a very skilled <coughs> chemist. Um, he was a scholar of German at the Birmingham University, and because of his connection to the late thirties when he was running the school, uh, when I touched him on Eric Hosmer, I mean, he met a great many refugees from Austria, uh, from Germany, particularly Austrian cultural people. One of the great Austrian uh, musicians was a man called Arnold Rose. R O S E, no accent, so I'm never quite sure how they pronounce it, and I've heard people say. Right, well, Arnold Rose was an incredibly talented violinist, and he was appointed the leader of the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra and the Vienna Opera Orchestra at the age of 19. And he led those in illustrious musical band, so to speak, until he was, I forget how old he was now, but in, until 1938, when the Nazis, of course, rose up in the Antares and he had to flee. And the last concert he performed in Vienna was Mahm's Night Symphony. Mm -hmm. Now this had particular prominency because he married Mahler's sister, Gustav Mahler's sister, Justine. Um, and one of his brothers married another of the sisters, I think she was Anderson. And they came to England, initially uh, they lived in uh, North London, and then they came to live with a man called uh, Fuchs, who was an Austrian dentist, who lived in um, Biscuit Gardens, clearly a very substantial dentist which is just my house. And Arnold was there, but his daughter, Alma, who was very well known as a light musician, she led a wonderful girls' band in Vienna in the 1930s called the Walsing Maidens. And um, she wasn't considered classically perfect, like her father, but nevertheless, this is what she did. And she came over with him. Um, Marla's sister unfortunately died in the early 30s in, in, in Vienna, so there was only Rosé, uh, his, his daughter Alma. Uh, Mrs. Marla was Alma, of course, Alma Bell. And they came to this country, but Alma said that she thought she could still make a career for Ireland if she went to Holland in 1940. Now, it's a crazy decision. I mean, we know with hindsight what a madness it was. But she decided, they said, no, you really shouldn't. You can't trust the children. No, no, they're not going to invade Holland. It's a new people. Anyway, she went to Holland. And she was betrayed after the Germans arrived. And she was shipped off to auschwitz birkenau with various other uh, people. And the Germans were absolutely cock a hoop because they had Marla's um, granddaughter, mm. the real Gustav. Now, what could they do with her? So they said, right, now we've got this huge camp of people in Texas, and they need to be entertained. And we... Ah. Well, let's have this first. We'll, we'll play this, you can get some sound. It's just in the middle of the room. This is a recording of the Bark Double from Chetane made by father and daughter in 1928. I don't think we can get it now. I'll carry on the tail, I'll carry on the tail. So, Alma... I'm trying to find the second movement, I can't... <laughs> don't worry, don't worry, please. Please don't worry, close me, close me. I'll tell you to the second movement of this, because it's a short and it's sweet and it's beautiful. Found it. Found it, right. Anyway, um... Alma was shipped off to the, the camp and she was made to recruit other women in the prison uh, who could play instruments. And they formed a band, 
and the idea of this band was to entertain the SAS, the warders, the staff, but also the inmates, as they were trooped off to the gas chamber. And the Nazis said, if you don't play well, you'll be gassed, so this is your choice. You try hard, otherwise that's the end of it. Unfortunately, in 1944, they, they did survive, they played their heart out. Uh, Alma got typhoid and she died. Now going back to Philip Wayne, because Arnold Rose was living in this good gardens and a Austrian refugee, inevitably he would meet up with Philip Wayne, the musician. And they got to know each other and they liked each other very much, a great disparity in age. But they used to put on concerts. And one of the most tragic was that in 1944, they put on a concert at St. Michael's back in Park. And Wayne had discovered only a week or two before that his only son had been killed in the Italian campaign. And Rose did not then know that his daughter had died of typhoid in our streets at about seven And I feel very much the benefit of having known Wayne and what he did. I never thought when I first heard the Marla Nine, you know, in 1952 or 3 or whenever it was when I was at uh, school, <coughs> that it would come back to me in quite such a dramatic way. And um, it would So I think mm -hmm. I need to uh, go and wipe my eyes and uh, mm -hmm. get on my own. Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you.